In the world of cryptozoology, there are few animals talked about more than the thylacine. The thylacine allegedly went extinct in 1936, although there are two pieces of quite convincing somewhat evidence I've decided to include. The very last thylacine lived in Hobart Zoo until his death on the 7th of September 1936. The two most commonly cited causes of death were either that he died of old age or that he died after being left outside in the cold. The second one's obviously a lot less nice. Here we have the first non-indigenous depiction of a thylacine, and this was in 1808. Here's another illustration from 1887 depicting two thylacine hunting an emu. Despite their small size, the thylacine could be very fearsome hunters. Now I think it's time to get on to the two main pieces of physical evidence. I want to add that both were taken in Tasmania, I don't consider the mainland Australian sightings of thylacines to be particularly reliable. In 1938, the Tasmanian Animals and Birds Protection Board launched an expedition to count the amount of remaining thylacines on Tasmania. Unfortunately, whilst they didn't find any living thylacines, they did find some very fresh thylacine footprints, and they put these in cast. There are two photos of these casts that I could find online, and you can go and see the footprints yourself if you can travel to the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery. The leader of the expedition was a man called Michael Sharland, who was a zoologist. I think what makes these footprints especially convincing evidence is at the time in 1938, people didn't really know that the thylacine had gone extinct two years prior, and the fact that this expedition even happened would show that whilst, you know, the dwindling numbers of thylacine was obviously quite evident, I mean, none have been killed in the wild for ages, people still believed they were out there. I also think that there was no reason to lie or hoax this, because the man who led it was very reputable, and he just wanted to find some thylacines. Our second piece of alleged evidence is a bit more controversial, and I think less reliable, but I wanted to include it anyway. When we examine the photo, we can notice a few things. There's ten print impressions that have been filled in with plaster, and the prints are about, probably, a ten centimetres wide. They're quite close together, which means if it was a thylacine, it would have been running quite quick. And they're spaced out reasonably far, so they're probably not a dog. The man who made the print casts was called Dr. Eric Gieler, and he had them in his own private collection before being donated to Hobart Museum. The prints were later examined in 1998, and were apparently confirmed to actually be thylacine. However, whilst I do find this a bit convincing, I think it's important to note that when the museum was contacted, the prints were nowhere to be found. In June 2020, Hobart Museum has no knowledge of these prints and they're not in their collection anymore. However, we do know that they still existed in 1998. Whilst I do find both pieces of evidence very interesting, I think the 1938 one is by far the more convincing of the two, and is actually possibly evidence of a surviving population of thylacine dating post-1936 in the wild. I think the 1960 prints are also interesting, but it's difficult to say how reliable they are considering they're both A. lost and B. we don't have close-up photos of them. But because they were examined by a proper doctor, that does give them a bit of credence. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video a lot. My patrons in the bio, as always, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!